Hey, how are you? Max Charlebois here, aka Miss the Part. I hope you're doing well. With that being said, welcome back to another idea to reality. It's a series where I take different stories that I've written over the past few years, maybe a few months, and I break them down into digestible bites and give you another side of the channel, a writer's side. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about if I had written The Amazing Spider-Man 3 and getting into the specifics of this story. So that being said, my fellow watchers, sit back, relax, and let's get into the breakdown of this fanfiction. Brief... The If I Had Written The Amazing Spider-Man 3 started with a display of the immense regret that Peter Parker felt for the loss of his girlfriend, Gwen Stacy, whom he had been unable to save at the end of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. After losing the essence of life, he had to force himself to exit by joining a dating app. He never went past looking at pictures and by fighting crime. It was the crime fighting that managed to take his mind away from Gwen. In one of his manic depressive moods, he read a note from his dad from the briefcase and I really wanted to write that in. I wanted to make more secrets told from that specific briefcase. And this is where Peter gets distraught in a state of manic episode. He discovers hidden meanings, which he traced to Octavius Industries. In a break-in, he discovered the Venom symbiote, which altered the course of the story. The symbiote made him faster and stronger, and also changed his attitude for the worse. After a series of negative occurrences, Peter finally realized the negative effects of the suit and manages to rent it off his body but at the cost of losing one of his co-workers, Eddie Brock, who got infected. Reason for the events in the story. This breakdown series serves as a means to explain certain parts of the story, which may seem unclear or may seem unreasonable to the development of the plot, but in actuality, a very essential thing. I'm getting a lot of people wondering why I chose certain things, why I did certain plot elements, and why part 3 was necessary. Other than the demand for the part 3 of the discontinued Spider-Man franchise, I felt that the story had a lot of emotional grievances that remained untold. Gwen Stacy was the only love interest of the Spider-Man before her dad's death. It was necessary to try and imagine how he would feel, how he would survive, how he would cope with his job as a reporter, a hero, and a boyfriend, or in this case, an ex. Therefore, it was a necessity for this story to be told so the depth of this complexity could be explored in his mental strength enduring these grievances. The similarities between The Amazing Spider-Man 3 and Spider-Man 3. It has been talked about since I wrote this fanfiction and released it on the channel that The Amazing Spider-Man 3 and Spider-Man 3 have similar plots which included the Venom symbiote and the chaotic effects that it had to the character. The similarities contain even the nuisance of the Venom-induced dance done by the first Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire. However, it was necessary to first give a silent nod to the existence of the other Spider-Men and the other universes. Furthermore, it was to establish how certain events happen to all the other variants across the universe. These events are referred to as canon events. An instance of a canon event is the death of Peter's uncle, or a close relative. The trauma is one of each of them that they had to experience in order to become who they are as heroes. The possession or the combating with the Venom symbiote is likely a canon event. It happened to the first Peter, Tobey Maguire. It was also shown that the third movie and the youngest Peter, Tom Holland, had incorporated the Venom symbiote into his universe through Eddie Brock or Tom Hardy's Venom. This was shown in a post credit scene where Venom got excited after seeing Peter on the screen and licked it and later acknowledged how intricate he was about Peter. Therefore, 
it is only proper to incorporate it in the second Peter, Andrew Garfield's version as a canon event. I'm not saying that this story is a canon event, but I'm saying that it really does showcase similarities between these, and it is a reason to explain if we use the Across the Spider-Verse rules that are a canon event. In Spider-Man 3, where Peter was corrupted by the Venom symbiote, the external characteristics of the symbiote was not given imminence. That particular part contained three villains. The Venom symbiote, who was later transferred into Eddie Brock's skin. Harry Osborn, who even though subsequently joined Peter in his course for justice. And Sandman, who was another villain. This downplayed the effect the villain could have on the series. Therefore, it was necessary to have a personal screen time of this villain to see the changes that would occur. Furthermore, with the emotional grief that Peter was passing through, I really wanted to write the symbiote as its own villain who would attack the emotional and expose the in-depth grief of Peter. Using a villain who would strain the physical strength of Peter would leave the emotional story of Peter bare and unexplained. Venom was the best villain to capitalize on the emotional weakness and trauma that was left behind from the death of Gwen Stacy, and it was filled with other emotions other than what necessarily was needed. There are scenes that carry more value than the surface. They may appear different, and occupy split seconds, but they carry deeper, complex meanings. These served as the major events in the story because they altered the character's thought process, or created an effect. One of the major events is shown when Peter joins a dating app. This is a major event that I wanted to write because Peter had been hauled up in his room for so long in the mentally disabled thought of how he could have saved a lot of people, but he couldn't save the one person that needed to be saved, ate him up. Joining the dating app was Peter's first step at accepting reality. Although he initially didn't do much with it, but he later swiped right, which was the acceptance of a new partner, Mary Jane. This was the final moment of coming to terms with the reality of his life and moving on, and that's why I really wanted to add that scene at the very end, as it showcases that Peter is now finally moving forward in his life. He's no longer going to be at the burden to Gwen Stacy in that death. He needs to finally showcase, okay, I'm gonna be moving forward, this has happened, I can't change that. So the dating app was really put there as a brand new form of acceptance, and I wanted to add that in because I felt like in the 2014 timeline, I think dating apps were kind of finally, you know, getting there, and I thought this would have been a perfect area to really place that. And another major event was Peter rediscovering his father's notes, and the understanding of what his father intended him to do. The notes had been preserved for a much older version of himself, not in age, but in wisdom and understanding. A version of himself who would fully understand the weight of science and the choices thereof. Him finally understanding these notes displayed his maturity and his being in par with his father. The understanding of these notes helped foster the continuance of the plot as it showed him where the symbiote was kept. It was not explicit about the nature of the symbiote, but I tried to take elements from the Ultimate Spider-Man comic book series where I thought it would have been really interesting to have Richard Parker make the costume at Octavius Industries and also add an auto. Furthermore, a different major event is shown when Peter devises himself of the suit, which he realized caused him issues. Peter was able to look beyond the superficial powers the Venom symbiote gave him by being attached to a suit and connect with his emotions to realize how much he had changed and how badly the change was for him. He made the decision to choose his family, Aunt May, over the powers of the symbiote. Moreover, Peter placing the papers of his father and Gwen Stacy's picture in the tin was another moment. 
after he placed them in the tin, he placed them in the closet. He was not willing to let his past control him any longer. He was willing to take the brave step of him actively engaging with what the future had held for him, letting go of the physical attachments to beings that meant so much for him was a big step. Hence, it was important to show Peter's acceptance with the reality. Another major event was when Peter was finally able to open up to Aunt May. Severally, Peter had displayed the hesitation in talking with Aunt May due to his reasons. This was taking a toll on her as she noted his attitude and called him out on it. He even moved away from home and came home on rare occasions, not to see her, but to consume images of Gwen from his room. Finally, he opened up to her about what he had done, and this was a step in rebuilding a relationship he had left. Due to his loss of Gwen, the other relationships he had in his life were failing. The relationship with Harry too was noted to have failed, as he was angered at the resemblance of the robber to Harry. His opening up to Aunt May was a step in the right direction of reconciliation. There were characters other than the central character in the If I Had Written. There were very essential characters to the plot that held significant value. One such character is Peter's dad. Although Peter's parents are not really talked about, Peter's dad seemed to revolve in this episode. First from his notes, which he had left for Peter, then the affiliation with Octavius Industries. Peter's dad, who was a science geek, obviously served as a model to Peter, as it displayed through series of complex scenes that Peter is equally a science geek. His character is pivotal in Peter's connection with the symbiote, also his character which was represented vigorously through his work showed how intentional his father was about him, and how much he loved him. Another major character was Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock is a representation of the oppressive system. Eddie who agreed, unwillingly, represents the system of how people are treated when they are lesser in status quo than the rest. Peter bullied Eddie to do the work, which he, Peter, was paid to do. Peter even admitted that he did this because there was something about Eddie that made him an easygoing person, even though he never liked him. This attitude created a physical effect on Eddie, which made him dislike Peter and strived to undo him. This is what led him to allow the symbiote, which a reasonable person would flee from, to consume him. Gwen Stacy and her demise was a major character, as most of Peter's world revolved around her. Most of the decisions that he made was prompted by his loss of her, or his need to stop feeling depressed about her demise. This made her essential to the plot. She represents the past, which most people would find hard to let go, and be cloud people from the joys of the future. It's true, even in writing, when, when you're writing this stuff, you really gotta think of personal experiences, and sometimes you have to let the past go. And that's why I thought Gwen Stacy is such a perfect candidate, because it holds so much value. And finally, Aunt May. She represents the pillar which everyone thinks is strong but equally needs the support of others. She had to be strong for Peter. Although Peter was constantly hurting her by ignoring her existence, Aunt May who appeared to understand Peter's issue and tried to provide support that he needed, he also needed acts of kindness. Alternative routes that I could have taken would have been instead of Peter letting the symbiote go, he would have let it stay on him. This is now a what if scenario almost. He would have gotten addicted to the thrill it gave him, damning the consequences of his emotions. This is because the symbiote would help him forget the pains of the past, the death of Gwen and his parents. He would let the symbiote consume him, and he would slowly turn to the villain of his own story. Eddie would not get the symbiote because Peter would have no cause to get rid of it. In the point where Peter becomes the villain, the need would arise of a hero to emerge too. The city would notice the degeneration of Spider-Man into something else and the lack of Peter's dedication at work. This would cause Eddie Brock to step up to fill the aspect of the photographer. The hero would be left unfilled, thereby increasing the crime rate. 
And the only way to salvage the city would be an imminent crossover of other established heroes, or to create a novel hero who would tackle Spider-Man. And that is going to be it for this particular breakdown episode, idea to reality, a writer's perspective. I really wanted to give you my initial thoughts, break it down and really go over what was in my mind when I wrote this. I was really thinking of different storylines, taking from different storylines and being like, okay, what can I do that's original? What, what can I do that hasn't been done before? And I think my main focus on this episode was really to showcase one villain, and that is Peter Parker. Although he's not really a villain as the sense of, you know, attacking people and whatnot, but he's the villain of his own story until he finally realizes that the symbiote was taking him over. And that is something that I really wanted to write. It was a version of the story. I was like, okay, Venom is such a great character. He really is. But you have to consider the fact that you don't want to rush a storyline. And I really didn't want to rush this particular storyline at all. I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to put him in the third film. I'm going to put him in the Sinister Six storyline because I felt that Venom would have been more like a Suicide Squad villain where the characters would have to, you know, grab him and fight him. That's going to be another breakdown. But again... I'm really glad that I was able to get my perspective on the If I Had Written episode. But that being said, my fellow watchers, I do want to say if you guys like the shoutout segments, do make sure to comment when a video is released so that when we end up doing these, we can take your comments and we can showcase them on the channel. But that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and turn those notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. But that being said, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.